Shabbat Shalom, Yasharala Shabbat Shalom. This is your Aqadash Alahayim coming at you with another quick lesson. First and foremost, I want to say, Ka Hala Abanawa, Yahawa, Bahasham, Yahawa Shah, Hamashiyah, Amanawal, Barakata. Yahweh being the name of our Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days, the Lord of Hosts, the Almighty, and Yahweh Shah being the name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And I have a lesson today for y'all for Sabbath class, man, pertaining to preparing your souls for temptation. It's important to prepare yourself for your temptations, your lust, your desires, right? You know what your lust is. You know what your desires are. Right. You know better than anybody else what you like, what sin entices you. So it's important that you prepare yourself for those temptations, man. And that that comes with self-examination. You got to examine yourself on a, on a day to day basis, on a weekly basis. You know, I encourage brothers and sisters to write down every week, you know, things that you got to improve in, things that you got to work on. Right. Every every week I uh, myself, I write down my uh, self examinations pertaining to the things that I need to get better in. Right. Whether it's, you know, uh, being more obedient, um, doing more lessons, applying more scriptures. You know, I, I write a list down, you know, with seven to eight things that I got to improve on on a weekly basis. And it kind of keep me on my toes. Right. So I encourage brothers and sisters to do the same thing. You you won't get better in this walk if you don't examine yourself and prepare yourself for your temptations. man. You will not get better. Right. And if somebody can't correct you, you would definitely never get better. Right. You got to be able to take correction. And um, through the spirit, you know, I'm doing this lesson for individuals that may be struggling with certain temptations. Right. I know it's a lot of brothers in Israel that's battling that lust demon, you know, that adulterous spirit, you know, that pornography demon. All right. So we're going to go into a couple precepts pertaining to that lust demon and how to prepare yourself for that lust demon. Right. That vile fornication demon that we battle all the time. Right. Even if you're not actually committing the physical act of adultery hey, in your heart, if you're thinking about it, you're doing it. So you have to repent from it, man. Uh, America sexualized these, these women on a high level, man, on a very high level. You could be watching TV and you see a woman on TV and, and she entices you. Right, you can go into Walmart inside the grocery store. You see a woman with no clothes on, and you get enticed by it. Right, you gotta you gotta have self control and self discipline in these last days, or you will be taken. Right, so let's start off in the Apocrypha with the book of Ecclesiasticus, the twenty fifth chapter in the twenty first verse, and it reads, "Stumble not at the beauty of a woman." And desire her not for pleasure. Right? So that's step one into preparing yourself, man. Don't stumble at the beauty of a woman. Right? There's a lot of beautiful, fair women out here in Babylon, but that not that's not supposed to make you stumble in your walk. Right? Just because you see a, a beautiful woman, that don't mean you lose your mind and now you're ready to forsake your marriage for this woman. Right? Or or pursue this woman knowing that she's married. Right. You're, the beauty of a woman shouldn't cause you to sin. Right. The most I say, stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire her not for pleasure, because a lot of times brothers look at these these beautiful women and they automatically go left. Right. They start thinking about how the woman look while she naked or what sexual position you can have this woman in and this, that and the third in your heart, in your mind. Right. Don't desire these women for, for pleasure, man. Right. Don't desire a woman for that. You we desire women to to raise households, to, to build up households and to be helpmeets, not just for sexual pleasure and, and that only. Right. We're not supposed to stumble at the beauty of a woman, neither desire her for her pleasures. Right. You you had um, this Kemet brother uh, by the name of Polite. 
he just, you know, got indicted for for raping his stepdaughter, right? He got enticed. The lust of the flesh overpowered him. And he tried to, you know, force himself with his own wife's, with his own wife's daughter, right? He told me that you wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one talk with her about loving and respecting me as a great mother that I was and am. And I actually believed you. I believed that you were going to bring her right back. I thought you were going to have this trusting conversation with her that you promised me. Her and I both trusted you. For a grown man to violate a child who trusted him, you should be ashamed of yourself. You plotted on me and my little girl. The entire time you knew what you planned to do. Isolate, intoxicate, then violate my baby. Shame on you. I trusted you to bring her right back. You were supposed to bring her back the same way that you took her. Instead, you drugged her and took advantage of her. And you sexually abused her. You forced alcohol down her throat. You then forced her to see things that no child should ever have to see. You forced her to feel things that no child should have to feel. The Most High tell us not to learn the ways of the Egyptians, right? Let's go to the book of Leviticus, the 18th chapter. And we'll start at the first verse. Right, because some brothers, you know, you battling demons within your household pertaining to your own uh, stepchildren, man. And it shouldn't be so, man. It should not be so. Right? You're supposed to have power over your flesh and your desires, man. Like I always say, your, your fleshly desires should never, your fleshly desires should never outweigh or have more power than your morals and values, man. And your obedience to the Heavenly Father. A Tampa man on trial for raping a teenager is found guilty. Rico Johnson was convicted a short time ago, and yesterday he came face to face with his young victim. And today the jury delivered his fate. Fox 13's Gloria Gomez shows us what led up to the verdict. Mr. Johnson, I represent this young. Rico Johnson got cold feet at the last minute and decided not to testify in his own defense. But he had plenty to say during closing arguments about his innocence. I'm not guilty. Of doing anything. Johnson, who is acting as his own attorney, is accused of raping his ex girlfriend's 15 year old daughter while her mother was at work back in April of 2019. The girl told the jury about it, but what made it nearly unbearable was having to answer questions from the man who's accused of raping her. You said I came in your room and you had your phone in your hand. Do you have any opportunity at any time? To call the police. No, I was too busy telling you to stop and pushing your hands off me. Prosecutors say this is not a she said, he said case. There is scientific evidence pointing directly at Johnson. His specific DNA. And they urged the jury not to have any sympathy for him. Mr. Johnson elected to exercise his constitutional right to represent himself. He doesn't get bonus points for that. Johnson placed all the blame on the young girl, claiming she came on to him. I, the real victim, should be found not guilty. But the jury didn't buy it. The defendant is guilty of lewd and lascivious molestation as charged. The defendant is guilty of sexual battery. Now Johnson could be sentenced to decades in prison. Gloria Gomez, Fox 13 News. And Johnson will be sentenced in February. As many brothers that's, that's of, uh, of our nation that goes through these temptations in these trials. But we are not to stumble at the beauty of a woman. And we're not to have dealings with no children, especially especially your, your, your wife's children. Right? This is the book of Leviticus, the 18th chapter in the first verse. And it reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I bring you, shall ye not do, neither walk ye in their ordinances. Right? 
So the Most High is letting us know the children of Israel, you 12 tribes, you blacks, Latinos, Native and Seminole Indians, not to do after the doings of the land of Egypt, because we was held in captivity in, in Egypt, right? We was following their traditions, their customs, their ways, right? Just like here in Babylon, we're following their ways, their customs. You keep in, you keep in uh, Christmas, birthdays, holidays, right? You 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 down with the LGBTQ rights, right? Everybody is equal. You're down with their teachings and their doctrines, their philosophies, right? But the Most High say, after the lands of Egypt, uh, where ye dwelt, you should not do after their doings, right? Don't don't do what they do. Don't move how they move, right? Because in the land of Egypt. It was okay for a man to sleep with his mom. It was okay for brothers and sisters to sleep together. They wasn't condemned. It was okay for a man to have a wife and be laying down with the daughters. That was that was okay in Egypt. But the most I say we are not to do after the doings in the land where we dwell. And right now, America is spiritual Egypt. It's a lot of uh, vile things that go on over here. That should not be accepted by the children of Israel. Right? A lot of things like pedophilia. Pedophilia is becoming a norm over here in Babylon. And they, they reducing the um the the offense. They reducing um the punishments for it over here in Babylon, just like in ancient Greece, just like in ancient Rome, right? They reducing and, and normalizing pedophilia, right? Let's jump to verse 17. Right. This is Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 17. And it reads, thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. Neither shall thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness, for they are near kinswomen. So like it for they are her kid. They are her near kinswomen. It is a wicked. It is wickedness. It's a wicked thing. Right. Just like Elon Musk. His his father, his father had children with his stepdaughter, right? Elon Musk's dad had a wife, right? Her, the wife had children already coming into the marriage. The, the dad slept with his stepdaughter and had babies, not just one, but multiple, right? That's wickedness. That's evilness. It says, thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter, Meaning you shouldn't have sex with your with your wife and her daughter. Right? That's a vile thing. And brothers get jammed up every other day out here in Babylon because they pursuing their stepdaughter, right? Or vice versa. The the the, the stepmother is sleeping with her husband's children. We you, are together. <laughs> Sorry. Together? Yes. As in like what? Me and your son are together. As in how we were together, me and your son are together. He just gonna shake his head. So what you mean? Like, how long this been going on though? Three months, maybe? Three months. Yeah. Three months. Look at him. <laughs> man, let me just tell you this right here. Man, man, this is my son right here. Ain't man one of y'all got no type of respect for me, kid. We got respect for you. Y'all ain't got no respect, kid. Hey, man. It's only been a week. I just been talking about what we were gonna do when he turned 18. What y'all were gonna do when he turned 18. What, what y'all gonna do, sir? I said, we just been talking about it. I mean, what the world? I mean, you basically helped me raise my son. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I help you take care of him. And I'm still going to take care of him. Take care of him, huh? Yeah. She be looking out, bro. Looking up. <laughs> looking up. It is what it is. I don't it wanna, is it, what it is. I don't want to have a full blown conversation. I don't want to get loud. We have neighbors. You need to respect people. It is what it is. Oh, it's, man. I have been wanting to leave for a long time. Oh, wow. Right. That's that shouldn't be so. You must prepare yourself. There's a reason that the most High had to give us these laws so that we don't err. Right. Like a lot of our ancient forefathers did and our foremothers did. They erred. They sinned because they didn't prepare their soul for temptation. Right. You have grown as men praying on little children. Right. Because their fleshly lust and desires overpower their morals and their values. Right. Let's go back to the uh, Apocrypha. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus, the ninth chapter. 
And let's go to the eighth verse. The book of Ecclesiasticus, the ninth chapter in the eighth verse, and it reads, Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman, meaning avoid gazing or lusting after a beautiful woman. And look not upon another's beauty, for many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman, for herewith love is kindled as a fire. Right? So don't be looking at a woman who is not your spouse, right? You have to have, you got to keep your eyes in check, right? You got to keep your lust in check and your desires in check. Have discipline, self-discipline, right? For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman, right? That's why you have a lot of baby mamas running around. Men was lusting after this woman, after her beauty, but the woman attitude and spirit just went right. They couldn't be together, right? The man was so infatuated with this woman and intrigued and, 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 and raping her with his eyes that when he finally got her and got his rocks off, now he don't want nothing to do with the woman because her personality is trash, right? Her, her mindset is trash, right? But you got your rocks off, but now you don't want to deal with this woman. You're not, supposed to, you're not supposed to have that type of mentality, man, right? For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. For herewith, love is kindled as a fire. And that lust, right, is kindled as a fire, right? Because that's what it truly is, man. It's, it's truly lust. You're really lusting after these women and wanting them for their pleasure. And then when you get it, it's like, hey, you done got what you wanted and now you're done with it. Right? Like a child with a toy. Right? It's important to maintain faithfulness when you when you already married. And, and dealing with your wife, it's important to, to remain faithful to your rib. Don't be just out here lusting after all these women when you got a rib, right? Many people have been led astray and deceived because they thought, oh, this woman bad. Oh, she's an OnlyFans model, right? Oh, she cute. I could see me with that for the rest of my life. And then when they get to know this woman after they done smash, hey, they don't want nothing to do with them, right? They know she's a thought. They know she's a jump off. She's a groupie, right? So you got to be careful, man. You have to prepare yourself, especially if your weakness is beautiful women, right? You have to train yourself to be uh, austere and disciplined when it comes to dealing with the beauty of a woman, right? Let's go to First Edris, the fourth chapter in the 27th verse, because we got to prepare our souls for temptation, right? You must prepare like when you examine yourself, write down your weaknesses, right? And write down some precepts that that shows you how to overcome that weakness and apply it. It's that simple, man, because you at war, right? You could try to be a man pleaser, you know, try to appear to look righteous in front of brothers and sisters. Hey, but that war is going on within you, brother, right? So you have to keep yourself in check. You got to stay on yourself, Right? Um, Cause you might be around people, you might be around some people that don't love you, so they're not gonna correct you. They're not gonna tell you, "Hey, brother, you going off, right?" So you have to check yourself sometimes. You gotta love yourself and, and write down your weaknesses and apply it, right? Cause the Most High give us a way out of our temptations. This is First Edges, the fourth chapter in the twenty-seventh verse, and it reads, "Many also have perished and erred." So like you, many also have perished, have erred and sinned for women. So many men, right? Like 50 Cent song, many men, right? Many men also have perished, meaning died because of a woman, right? Many men have erred and sinned, meaning transgressed the laws of God for a woman, man, right? Prime example, Adam. In the beginning, Adam. He sinned for his wife, right? Because even though his wife went off and, and, and ate the forbidden fruit, right, which is the, the knowledge and the teachings of the other nations, he didn't have to eat of that fruit just because she went off, right? But he decided to, to follow his wife and he ended up sinning against the Most High. He went off, right? Many have erred and, and, and sinned for women, right? Another example is Samson. Right. Samson erred by revealing his weakness to his woman. 
right? Let's get that in the book of Judges. The 16th chapter. And we'll start at the at the 13th verse. All right, and I'm going to just read through it. This is the book of Judges, the 16th chapter and the 13th verse, and it reads, And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the well. So Delilah already done asked this man what his weakness is, right? Because she trying to get intel for the, uh, for the Philistines, right? Now, th those are uh, are not the people dwelling over there in Palestine right now because Palestine and Philistine is one and the same. Uh, these are a hermetic nation of the Philistines was, was uh, trying to get Delilah to get the information out of Samson, right? They, they trying to get her to get the information out of Samson to know his weakness so they can overcome him, right? So they could take him down. Right. And that's another thing. You have to be careful with these women. Right. Just because a woman beautiful, that don't mean she won't set you up to get you knocked off, man. It's a lot of brothers out there in the world that done been knocked off behind a woman. Right. That rapper Trouble was at a woman crib that was in a relationship with somebody laying inside that man's house. And, and the man came home and, and shot him dead. Right. You have to be mindful with dealing with these women. Right. Verse number 14. And she fastened it with the pen and said unto him, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of his sleep and went with the pen of the beam and with the well. And she said unto him, how canest thou say I love thee when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times and has not told me wherein Thy, thy great strength lieth, right? So Samson, you know, is at is at war with the with the Philistines, the Hermetic Philistines, not the Arabic Philistines or the Palestinians, right? With the Hermetic African, the originals, right? He would not reveal his secret to Delilah, and she pressing him. She pressing him. You know how Eve can be, right? You know how Eve can be. She can she can press you. And vex you until you finally confess to something. Right? Um, and she was a heathen as well, but she had the spirit of, of Eve on her, right? Wicked spirit. Right? Verse 16. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. Meaning he was sick of her asking, hey, what's your weakness? Tell me. Please tell me the secret. Please, please, please tell me. Tell me. He was vexed. He was grieved, man. Right? But that shouldn't that shouldn't be what it takes to get you to spill the beans, right? That should not be what it takes to get you to spill the beans. But it wasn't so for Samson. Verse 17. That he told her all his heart and said unto her, There have not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto the Most High from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me and I will become weak and be like another man and be like other man. Right. So he finally confessed. He spilled the beans. He let her know his weakness. Right. Thinking that she wasn't going to tell nobody. Right. Didn't know he was being set up. Didn't know that she was an informant or a mole or a rat. Right. Verse 18. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart. She sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. So she sold him out for a bag, man. Like a lot of ribs do in today's time. They will sell you out for that money, man. Right? But Samson erred because of women. Right? He wasn't supposed to tell her his whole heart, right? Let's go to the book of Proverbs. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. Um, the 29th chapter. 
the book of Proverbs, the 29th chapter in the 11th verse. The book of Proverbs 29 and 11, and it reads, A fool uttered all his mind, but a wise man keep it in to afterwards. So that, that's what Samson became when he told her his secret. He became a fool because he uttered all his mind, meaning his heart. Right? She said, she said to the lords of the Philistines, Hey, Samson told me all his heart. You can't be around here just giving these women your whole heart, man. Telling them everything that they want to hear. Everything that they ask you, you telling them. Right? Let's go to the book of Micah, the seventh chapter in the fifth verse. You can't be around here telling these ribs every single thing, especially your weaknesses, man, because they're going to use it against you. Not all, but most going to use it against you. Right? Micah, the seventh chapter in the fifth verse, and it reads, Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Right? Meaning you don't have to tell a woman every single thing about you, man. Right? Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Right? But that, that be our people stumbling at the beauty of a woman and now they uttering their whole mind to this woman. Right? That's just, you know... That's just the moral of the story. You cannot just be telling these women every single thing about you, right? Brothers are going to a rib crib. They just met this rib two days ago. They at her house now. And now they, they telling her they stash spot. They telling them where all the drugs at. They confessing all their crimes and wicked ways to this woman. Not knowing that this woman got another nigga that she dealing with that's with it. And as soon as she tell this man that you got money, that you got a stash spot, that you do this, that, and the third, this man coming for blood, man. Because you done uttered all your mind to this woman. Because you stumbling at her, be her beauty. Looking at her shape, looking at her thickness, her, her body, right? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, man. Many have erred and perished and sinned for women, right? Even King David. Right. King David had a baby with a, with a woman that was married. Right. Let's go to the book of Second Samuel, the 11th chapter. Second Samuel. The 11th chapter. Salakia. Second Samuel, the eleventh chapter, in the second verse, and it reads: "And it came to pass in an evening tide that David rose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself." And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. See, that's why the Most High say, hey, stumble not at the beauty of a woman, right? Just because these women are beautiful to look upon, that don't mean you go you go sinning behind that, right? And a lot of our brothers drop their morals and their values when they see the beauty of a damn woman, right? Verse three, and David sent and inquired after this woman. And one said, is that, is that, so like it is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. Right. So one of his one of his peoples let him know, hey, this 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 the daughter of Eli, Eliam. Right. And the wife of Uriah. Right. He gave the history. Hey, this woman has a father and this woman also has a husband. Right. Verse four. And David sent messengers. And took her and she came in unto him and he lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanness and she returned unto her house. Right. So she stayed. She she knew she had a husband. She didn't care because a lot of women only care about status. Right. Uriah the Hittite was was a common a common man. Right. She she cared about status. And that just goes to show you that the same way Bathsheba 
care about status is the same way a, a, a lot of these women in America. They care about status. That's why you could have women get an interview saying that they would leave their spouse, they would leave their husbands to spend the night with a celebrity. Right? They would leave their they, they, they would forsake their marriage to go have a one night stand with somebody that's famous. Right? The same thing that Bathsheba did. Right? So David sent messengers and took her despite him knowing that she had a husband. He still pursued it. Right? And she came in unto him and he lay with her for she was purified from her uncleanness and she returned unto her house. Meaning, you know, there's a law with dealing with uh, having sex. When the man's seed of compilation goes out from him and enters into a woman, that woman is unclean and the man is unclean until the evening. Right. So after she was purified from her uncleanness, her physical uncleanness, she returned unto her house. She went back home to her husband, man. David popped her, blew her back out, and then sent her back to her husband. Right? Verse 5. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. Right? So the woman got pregnant and she let King David know that, hey, she with child. Right? And eventually, King David sent Uriah out to, to battle to, to get killed so he could have his wife, right? In, in the law, in the in the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter, in the 14th verse, the Most High say, thou shalt not commit adultery. And David being the king, he committed adultery, man. And then he committed murder because he got her husband killed, right? And he had to reap the consequences and the judgments for his action, right? Why? Because he stumbled at the beauty of a woman. It's imperative that you know your weaknesses, right? Because Satan going to use your weaknesses against you, man. And he going to ultimately get you killed and put to death if you don't overcome your weaknesses, right? You must rehearse the righteous acts. You must understand and be real with yourself and, and write down your temptations. Write down your temptations. Write them down. And prepare yourself for them. We at war, man. It's a spiritual battle. You got to prepare yourself you got to literally prepare yourself, prep for war, man. Every day, every day. Some of us, we have to wake up while, 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 while battle is going on, man. As soon as we wake up, it's war, right? Some days are better than others. You wake up at peace, but sometimes you're in the middle of the battlefield as soon as you wake up. You have to prepare yourself for war, man, right? Another... Uh, Example of our of our forefathers uh, stumbling at the beauty of women was Solomon, right? The one that was born out of wedlock, right? That that was the son of Bathsheba and, and King David, right? Solomon was the wisest man in Israel, but then in his latter age, he started to become weak to his lust and desires, man. Right? Let's go to First Kings. The 11th chapter and the first verse. The book of 1 Kings, the 11th chapter and the first verse. And it reads, but King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians and Hittites. So Solomon, hey, he was in love with everything he seen, man. The women, the strange women of the other nations that worship imaginary gods, man. Right? The Egyptians, right? The Hermetic uh, nation of the Egyptians, they got, they had many gods. And all their gods was imaginary, meaning they're not real. They don't exist. Right? They idolize and praising and worship, worshiping gods that don't smell, that don't breathe that don't save you out your tribulations they worship imaginary gods and that's what you got to understand about these other nations they gods are imaginary they're not real right he he uh together with the daughter of Salakia, but king solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of pharaoh women of the moabites the chinese women the ammonites right the the japanese women the edomites the so-called white woman the, the Zidonians and the Hittites, the so-called African women, right? Verse number two, 
of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. Verse three, and he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away, turned away his heart, right? Because the Most High gave us instructions for a specific reason. He gave us these instructions so that we can live and that we can live justly and righteousness, right? That is our wisdom in the sight of the other nations to follow his commandments. Now, when we go off from his instructions, our hearts turn away, our minds turn away from the Heavenly Father. And that's what he don't want you to do, right? But Satan is going to is going to use his devices, his mental perception to sway your mind from the truth, man. And that's what he did to Solomon. Right. Satan knew and understood that Solomon started to grow a strong lust and desire for women of the other nations. So he infiltrated. Right. He infiltrated and used these women to, to knock Solomon off his pivot. man. And it was that simple. The, the deed was done. Right. Solomon was obsessed with these women, lusting after these women, stumbling after the beauty, just like his, his, his father did, just like his mother did, man. And he went off. Right. That's why you got to be careful of having children out of adultery, because they can be punished for your sins or, or that 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 gene or that DNA or that spirit of adultery. Right. Can go into your to your child. Right. And now your child is known as a, a, a child uh, out of wedlock. Your child is known as a child from somebody that committed adultery. Right. And that that same judgment can fall upon your child if you're not careful. Right. Now, also, uh, King David had another son, his oldest son, who, who stumbled at the beauty of a woman. But this woman was his own damn sister, man. Right. The woman was his own sister. When you go to 2 Samuel, the 13th chapter in the first verse and read all the way down to like the 21st verse, you can get the full, you know, context of what happened. But um, King Solomon's son and Amnon, Amnon raped his sister Tamar, man. He was so consumed in his lust and desires that he erred. That he sinned, that he raped his own half sister, man. Right? And when the deed was done, he told her to go away, get away. He started to hate her more than he loved her. Right? Because once you get your desire, once you fulfill the lust of the flesh, it ain't nothing but death after that, man. Death and murder. Right? Because rape is considered murder, according to the scriptures. Right? Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter. In the 25th verse, right? And you could read that account. I'm not going to go into it, you know, for the sake of time. But uh, 2 Samuel, the 13th chapter, in the uh, first verse on down to the 21st verse, right? Now, let's go to Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter, in the, 20, in the 25th verse. And it reads, but if a man... Find a betrothed damsel in the field and the man force her and lay with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. So if you rape a woman, right, you, 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 you catch this woman slipping, you force this woman to have sex, right, against her will, that man is supposed to be put to death. That's a sin worthy of death. Unlike here in America, you rape a woman, you're only going to get some jail time. You're not going to get put to death. You're not going to learn your lesson. And the other men around you that witnessed that, they're not going to learn a lesson either. That's not going to put the evil away by just locking somebody up for a certain amount of time. Right? The Most High tell us, hey, the judgment that must be executed is death on a rapist. Right? Verse 26. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death because she was forced against her will, right? 
for as a man, so like it, for as when a man raiseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. So just like when a man out of hatred going kill his neighbor, going murder his neighbor, that's the same equivalence to raping somebody, to raping a woman, man. That's the same equivalence. So uh, Amnon, sin was worthy of death, right? And you got to read that account because it's a it's a it's a uh, edifying story, right? Um, in First Samuel, uh, so like your Second Samuel, the thirteenth chapter, it's edifying, man, because it it shows you how much lust and fornication and lust of the eyes and you know people not having control over their 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 fleshly desires, how it can consume your mind and your heart, even though. You know, the Lord speaking to you saying, no, don't do this. This is wrong, right? You shouldn't be doing this. It, it kind of uh, drown out the voice of the Lord just to please the lust of the flesh. And it shouldn't be so, man, right? That's why it's important to prepare your soul for temptation so you don't be consumed by your lust, man, and desires, right? Even when you go to the history of Susanna, the two elders, Right. They bore false witness on, on Susanna because they was enticed. Uh, she wouldn't lay with them. Right. They they watched her take baths. Right. They hid themselves in the bushes, watching this woman, spying on this woman, burning in their lust. Right. So they popped up on her while she was naked, trying to have sex with her. Right. And she refused. She said she'd rather fall in the hands of the Lord than to fall in their hands. So they accused this woman of having sex with them, even though she was married, right? So they accused her of committing adultery, even though they didn't sleep with her, she didn't sleep with them, they still bore false witness on her. And eventually those two elders was put to death. You don't wanna be those two elders, man. And you could go read that in the pocket for the history of Susanna, right? Edifying story, right? About two men, two elders in the city that was burning in their lust. And they had been doing it for a while, with the Northern Kingdom, women of the Northern Kingdom and the women of the Northern Kingdom didn't turn them in because they were scared. But when when he rode up on the on the Southern Kingdom, uh, 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 a woman from the tribe of Judah, right? They they got caught up, man, because she wasn't giving in, right? She feared for her life and she knew that she was about to die, but still she trusted in the Most High and he delivered her through through Daniel, right? That's another commandment in Exodus, the 20th chapter in the 16th verse. Thou shalt not, not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Because lust, covetousness, right? Lewdness, concipience, right? It, it can lead to more sin. You're going to add sin on top of sin when you lust and when you commit adultery within your heart. It's going to force you to do things that's not convenient. Right. Like at first, the two elders in the history of Susanna, they lusted after this woman. They lusted after this woman, but that lust led to them bearing false witness. Right. If you could be if you could be covetous after what your neighbor have. OK, you're covetous after your brother's wife. Right. To the point where. You bear false witness on your brother just to get to his wife, you lying on that man just so you can have his wife. Because you're adding sin on top of sin. And you should fear to add sin on top of sin, man. Right? Another, another example, you know, in modern day time is R. Kelly. Right? He didn't he didn't control his, his sexual lust and desire for women. Right? You have uh, the rapper Tory Lanez that shot Meg Thee Stallion. Right? Supposedly. He couldn't control his lust and desires and, and aired. And sin for women. He's locked up in prison now behind a woman. Uh, back in the days, Mike Tyson was accused of raping a woman, had to go to prison. Right. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, the, the, the rapper Trouble got put to death behind a woman. Right. So that's the that's the ongoing tale of, of men in Israel, you know, throughout time being put to death behind a woman. Right. Because you can't control your appetites. Right. You can't control your appetites. Refrain from thine appetites. Right. And you shall receive a crown of life. You got to refrain from your appetites, man. 
Let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter 5 and verse 3. All right? The book of Proverbs chapter 5, and we're going to start at the third verse. And it reads, For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smooth, smoother than oil. Right. So a woman got the gift of gab sometimes, man. They could they could a, a woman can talk a man out his draws. Right. A woman can talk a talk a man out his salvation. Right. A, a strange woman can talk talk you out your out your marriage, out your morals and your values. Right. Because a woman's uh, the lips of a strange woman. Uh, drop as the as a honeycomb and her mouth is smoother than oil right slicker than grease right verse four but her end is bitter as wormwood sharp as a two-edged sword right so this woman done talked you out your 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 your, your underwear and now you smashing this woman right you done let your seed of compilation go out and now you sleeping in this woman house and then her her husband walked through the door and kill you. Right? Why? Because her end is bitter as wormwood. This woman done, done talked you out your marriage. Now you divorced. Now you all alone. You don't have a wife or family. You don't have this woman. You just by yourself now. Asked out. Why? Because her end is bitter as wormwood. Sharp as a two-edged sword. So you got to be careful out here with these women. Verse five, her feet go down to death. Her, her steps take hold on hell. Least thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable that thou can, that thou canest not know them. Right? So you got to, you got to take heed to these women and stumble not at the beauty of a woman. Right? A lot of these women are corrupt, evil, and wicked on the inside. Now they 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 pleasurable to the eye. What they say, uh, eye candy, right? They might be some eye candy, but that's about it, right? They have no morals, no values. They they spirit is rotten, right? They don't know how to take instruction. They don't know how to be submissive, right? They don't know how to be honest, right? So you have to be careful with dealing with these women, right? You don't want to get caught up out here dealing with these strange women. Right. Verse seven. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. So the Lord is telling you men to listen. Listen to what he's telling you, because these women, these Jezebels, these Delilahs, these Eves will get you put to death if you're not careful. Verse eight. Remove thy way far from her and come not nigh the door of her house. Meaning stay away from the uh, from the temptations of an adulterous woman. Right. She can lead you lead you to an immoral relationship. Right. Whereas in King David had an immoral relationship. Right. These women can lead you down a path of wickedness. And it, it's easy to get in trouble. It's hard to get out of trouble with the most high. It's easy to sin and go off. But then you got to reap those consequences and those judgments. In that sentence for going off, right? Verse nine, least thou give thine honor unto others and thy years unto the cruel, right? So you, you want to you wanna refrain from going to that woman's house, from, from being in that woman's house, man, right? She tell you, hey, my husband gone. You can come over. We could just hang out and smoke. We could just watch a couple movies, man. You know what that you know what that means. We could Netflix and chill. You know what that mean, right? You know what that means. That means it's time to have sex, lose sex acts, fornication, adultery. It's time to engulf and sin. That's what that means. That's a buzzword, a cold word, right? Least thou give thine honor unto others and thy years unto the cruel, meaning you can lose your integrity, right? And your reputation and self-respect by committing these sins and atrocities against the most high, right? Engaging in this type of behavior, right? 
It can lead to a lifetime of hardship and suffering because it says in thy years unto the cruel. Right. It can be painful consequences. Giving your strength unto these women. Right. Give not thy strength unto women because it can cost you. Right. Oh, it can cost you. Right. Let's go to the book of. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus. In the Apocrypha, all right? Matter of fact, let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter in the 26th verse. Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter in the 26th verse, and it reads. Start at verse 25, Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 25. I applied my heart to, to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even foolishness and madness. Right. So Solomon saying he applied his heart to seek out wisdom man, and to know certain things. Right. To know the wickedness of folly and even foolishness, even a foolishness and madness. So he applied his heart to know the difference between what's right and what's madness. Was righteous and was wicked. Verse 26. And I find more bitter than death. The woman. Whose heart is snares and nets. Meaning her mind is snares and nets. And her hands as bands. As handcuffs man. Who, whoso pleaseth the most high. Shall escape from her. But the sinner shall be taken by her. And that's a heavy judgment. When you a sinner man. To be taken by a woman. To be put in the coffin and put in the ground because you're dealing with a wicked woman. Because you couldn't control your lust and desires. Right? This woman MO is to, is to set you up and destroy your life, man. Just like a lot of these celebrities, they get with these, these model, these model women who are whores, who are gold diggers, right? They just looking to get knocked up by this man so they can get. 100,000 in child support every month, 50,000 in child support every month, right? Look at Tyrese Gibson, right? He He's breaking his ex-wife off in child support because that was her plan the whole time. Whose heart is snares and nets, snares and traps. These women come up with ways to trap men and to destroy their lives, man. And some women even set you up and trap you to put you to death. Right. So you got to be mindful, man. You got to understand what you really getting yourself into with your lust and desires. Right. You got to really understand what you're getting yourself into. Right. Let's go to the book of first John chapter two and verse 16. The book of first John chapter two and verse 16. Salakia. First John chapter two and verse sixteen. This is the book of First John chapter two and verse sixteen, and it reads, "For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world." Right. For all that is in the world, the world in this context means, you know, uh, traditions of man, paganism, uh, holidays, just the teachings of society being conform to so like it being conformed to society for all that is in the world. The lust of the flesh, people lust after people's beauty, man. Men lust after women's beauty. Women lust after men's beauty. Right. That's the lust of the flesh, right? And the lust of the eyes. With your eyes, you're lusting after what you see. Some people lust after drugs. Some people lust after money, after women, after uh, alcohol, after committing crimes. Some people lust after robbing people, man. Some people lust off of selling dope, right? Some people lust off of uh, entertainment, right? And the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. Because the most high ain't known none of that. The most high ain't with 
lusting after somebody flesh, right? The lust of the eyes, right? He not, he not into all that, right? That's of the world. That's what the world glamorize for our people to follow. That's why you have these dumb songs, three minute songs. And in the video, they cram as much folly inside Inside the music video, Salaki, inside the music video, they cram as much folly as possible to make you lust after what you see. So then when you attach from that entertainment on the TV, you go outside in real life and that's what you're looking for, what you just seen on the TV. When all that stuff is fabricated and lies, right? All that stuff is a, a strategic tool to use to entice you to go and sin. Oh, this rapper on the TV smoking blunts popping bottles in the club, surrounded by a bunch of women in the strip club. That's what the devil, Shaitan, wants you to do. He wants you to go mimic that wickedness so you could be destroyed, right? Because that is the pride of life. That's not of the Father. That's of the world. The Most High have other expectations for you, right? The whole duty of man is to fear the Most High and keep his commandments, Right. So you have to prepare your soul, your soul for, for temptations, especially dealing with these women. Right. Because your, your heart, your mind is, is what the devil attacks. That's what he wants you. He wants you to uh, follow. He wants you to follow your heart. Right. He wants you to do your heart's desires. And that's the doctrine. That's the teaching that they tell you. But you're not to follow your heart. Why? Because your heart is desperately wicked. Right. Let's go to the book of uh, Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. Jeremiah, the 17th chapter in the ninth verse. The book of Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. In the ninth verse. And it reads. Shalakia. The book of Jeremiah, uh, the 17th chapter, in the ninth verse. And it reads. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Right. Your heart is a liar. Your heart tells you to do something that goes against the most high. Right. Your heart told you to to pursue that married woman. Your heart told you to eat that pork chop sandwich, to eat that that swine. Right. Your heart told you to steal out that damn stove, man. Right. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Right. You have to understand that about yourself. Your heart going to tell you to do stuff that you're not supposed to do. Verse 10. I, the Lord, Yahweh, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. Right. So the most High search the heart, man. That's what he's looking at. Your inward parts. He want to see you battling from within, man. He want to see you fighting that good fight of faith. Right. Yahweh shall tell us. In the book of Matthew, that if you look on a woman to lust after her, you committed adultery in your heart already. You got to you got to fight those wicked thoughts, man. That's what this war is about. It's, it's spiritual warfare, a.k.a. psychological warfare going on, man. It's a psychological thing. And psychologically, you must prepare yourself. And, and study your weakness and your strengths, man. All right. I pray everybody have a blessed Shabbat and I, I play I pray so like I pray that you have a, a righteous upcoming week and that you take time out your busy schedule to examine yourself because your salvation is the most important thing on this planet, man. And with that, I like to say call Hala, Abanawa, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Hamashiach, Amanawa, Barakata. It's H O I Las Vegas, it's H O I to the chari chariots fly, Shalawam, Yasharala. Edom is done. Come, Yasharala.